Who will reign supreme in South Coast League football? And in boys' water polo, a matchup for the league title. It's all next on South County Sports Zone. Hi everyone, and welcome to South County Sports Zone from inside the MVTV studio in Mission Viejo. I'm Gordon Spencer. Well, Mother Nature went undefeated on Friday night, October 12th, after a massive rain and lightning storm delayed most of the high school football games until Saturday. In the South Coast League, a critical matchup between San Clemente and Capo Valley was rescheduled to 1 p.m. on Saturday, October 13th. San Clemente 2-0 and number 15 in Division 1. Kappa 0-1, number 3 in Division 3. Even the rain-soaked Cougar getting the Saturday wake-up call. Team's a little out of rhythm on a Saturday. Bad snap to Brendan Costello of San Clemente. Kappa recovers. They turn it into three. Lance Gardner, 28-yard field goal. Kappa up early, three to nothing. With one minute to go in the first, San Clemente takes the lead. Five-yard keeper, Brendan Costello. Finds the corner, 7-3, San Clemente. Second quarter, Nathan Manning, the escape artist. Look at him get away and find Jack Haley streaking across the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Capo back on top, 10-7. Capo extends the lead with five minutes to go. Manning again escapes. Look at the catch by Blake Morgan, fingertips. 38-yarder, 17-7, Capo. With 34 seconds left in the half, San Clemente back-to-back -back big plays, including a 23-yard pass to Jay Baggs. San Clemente trails 17-14 at the half. San Clemente cheer, prepared for all that wet weather. Third quarter, huge play for San Clemente's Brandon Costello. In the air to a wide open, Jaden Jenkins beyond the defense. San Clemente takes the lead back 21-17. Back and forth we go. Manning, Jack Haley, look at him throw it up, and it's a jump ball. Jack Haley comes down with it. What a catch, 24-21. Capo, guess what? Another big play for San Clemente in that offense. Costello escaping, finding Preston Rex. Rex stays on his feet somehow into the end zone. 42 yards, 28-24, San Clemente. Then. A big play for the San Clemente defense. Jake Brannon picks off Manning at the 42, and he's got it, and he's running, and he gets inside the 30-yard line before he's brought down. Then with one minute, 22 seconds left in the third, watch R.J. Donaldson. Think he's down, comes out of the pile. How does he stay up? 21 yards later, into the end zone. Huge play, touchdown San Clemente, they lead it. 35-24, 28 points between both teams in the third. Fourth quarter, last chance for Capo, Manning, and another interception for Jake Brannon. He brings it back, Capo runs out of time, and San Clemente wins a big one, 35-26 over Capo Valley. San Clemente now 3-0, Capo 0-2 in the South Coast League. Well, Capo will host Tesoro in a must win for the Cougars to avoid going 0-3 in league. Aliso gets the win over Danny Hills after Friday night's game was canceled. Danny Hills could not play on Saturday, so they elected to forfeit the game. Laguna Hills defeated Tribuco Hills as well on Saturday. Mission Viejo was lucky. They were on a bye, so they avoided the crazy weather. They will travel to San Clemente on Friday, October 19th to play for the South Coast League title. When we come back... It's off to the pool for some Seaview League boys water polo. Who will win the title? That's next on South County Sports Zone. The greatest thrills and excitement are awaiting you right in your own backyard. The CIF Southern Section and your SoCal Ford dealers encourage you to go to a game at your local high school. Unbelievable action is riding your community. You'll be amazed at what you've been missing. 
supporting your local school has never been more fun. Go to a game this week. Welcome back to South County Sports Zone in Seaview League Boys Water Polo. Aliso Niguel needing a win over Capo Valley for a shot at the league title. This was a good one. Aliso 2-1, their loss to Laguna Hills and Capo 3-0 and number three in Division IV. First period, as we get things started, boys fired up. First minute, the goal by Jack Moorhead. Bang in the top right corner, 1-0 Aliso. Tied at one now when Capo's Gage Pranajaya will take it from way out and score to make it two to one Capo. End of the first, Capo goes up by two. Ethan Pranajaya gets the dump in, the quick sidearm shot for two Cougars. Second period, Aliso down by four. When Jack Moorhead scores, Aliso down 6-3. Capo outscored Four to one in the second. Amir Barujerper rips the shot. Eight three Capo at the half. And Aliso coach John Puffer feeling a comeback. He was right. Third period. Here come the Wolverines. Alex Chen from the darkness. Goes cross goal. Aliso down eight six. Capo shut out in the third. Owen Furlong gets Aliso within one. Bang, hard to stop it. 8-7 after three to the fourth. Capo gets back on the board. Ethan Pranajaya comes up with it somehow. 9-7 Cougars. After a penalty shot, which was huge, it's now 10-7. There's the shot. But it's Alex Chen who steps up again for Aliso, getting them within two with 340 left. It's 10-8. Then 55 seconds left. Noah Jorgensen, the senior captain, scores a big one. Aliso down 10 to nine. Seconds left, last chance for Aliso, but Capo's Michael Morizano comes up with the stop at the buzzer. Capo holds on to win it, 10-9. Yeah, so I think this is the first time we beat Aliso in uh, two years and just felt really good. Uh, it was a little closer than we hoped, but um, it was still a win. We did great up until the half. Uh, we were up by five points at half, and that was great. Uh, we let it slip a little bit in the third quarter. They went on a four-goal run, but we were able to solidify our win, uh, step it up on defense, and get some stops in the fourth quarter, uh, make sure we secured the, the victory in the end. I think we came out very strong, and we had a great mental game coming into this, Elisa versus Capo. Um, I think that we could have done a lot better than we had, but you know, there's always room for improvement. Well, the two teams will meet again on October 24th. Moorhead and Furlong, three goals each for Aliso in the loss. Senior night for the Tribuco Hills girls volleyball team playing their last regular season home match, hosting the Portola Bulldogs. Brand new high school in Irvine. Portola with eight wins on the season. Tribuco Hills trying to get in the playoff set one. Tribuco Hills, Candle and Selmo set Saloni Singh, and it's 5-1 Tribuco Hills. Then Portola's Kira Stewart will get the kill, and Portola is down 13-6. Mustangs in white there. Portola trying to climb back in. Stewart sets Kylie Jordan, but it's blocked by Britt Holloway. 20-8 Tribuco Hills. Bulldogs. Faith Deneve sets Camden Tenorio, and it's blocked out 22 to nine, Tribuco Hills. Tribuco Hills, the set by Kelly Negron, and Selmo who puts it down, and Tribuco Hills wins set one 25 to 10. Greg Moothart and the Tribuco Hills Mustangs hoping for a warm up to get into the playoffs here against Portola. Set two. Kelly Negron, the ace, using that net, 4-0 Tribuco Hills. But Portola, been practicing as well. Camden Tenorio, the high serve and off the net. And that's an ace as well. And ties the set at seven. Tribuco Hills goes up by three. Britt Holloway sets Shannon Spencer. That's a cool name. 16-13 Tribuco Hills. 
Portola trying to keep it close and hold off Tribuco Hills. But Tenorio hits it out. Tribuco Hills wins set two, 25 to 17. Tribuco Hills ladies looking for the sweep on senior night. Set three, Portola's Faith Deneve sets Camden Tenorio. That's a good combo. No seniors on that Portola team. Brand new high school, 4-3 Tribuco Hills. Portola's Deneve, then again, sets Stewart, the kill, and the set's tied at seven. Then the Tribuco Hills D shows up. Hannah Bevan puts it down with the block right there, and it's 12-9 Tribuco Hills. More defense from the height of Tribuco Hills. Holloway, the block. 20 to 14, Tribuco Hills. And then for the match, Kelly Negron sets Hannah Bevan, the quickie, the kill, and the sweep in the third set, 25-16, Tribuco Hills. I think we did a really good job. We had our ups and downs, but we battled hard, and we played hard, and we gave our best. And it doesn't matter if we make it to CIF or not, we work really hard, and I'm really proud of everyone in my team. It's been really fun because like my whole team just gets along really well and we've been playing well. We're in a really hard league so like we've been doing okay but like overall it's been a really fun season and a good journey. So Tribuco Hills finishes 24 and 11 overall by defeating Portola in three. Those seniors are not done yet. Tribuco Hills did get into the Division II playoffs. They will travel to Riverside to play ML King for round one as the at-large team from the South Coast League. Mission Viejo and Elise Oniguel also in the girls' volleyball postseason. Good luck to all of them. And great news for Mission Viejo senior cross-country runner Kelly Hines. She is the first Mission Viejo runner since 1983 to win the individual title at the Orange County Cross-Country Championships. She also led the team to their first ever team title. That's it for this episode. You want more South County Sports Zone? Log on to missionviejolife.org or cityofalisoviejo.com. We want your feedback and updates on your teams. Follow us now. Thanks for watching. I'm Gordon Spencer.